Hey, Gabrielinos, Gene Harris, your friendly neighborhood police chief. For this version of 411 with the chief, I'm gonna go ahead and take my mask off just so we can interact together. But before I move from this spot, I will put it back on and make sure everybody in the building stays safe. So again, welcome to September's uh, 411 with the chief. I appreciate all of you taking the time to view this. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have any questions from the community, so we'll simply be just giving information uh, in this iteration, okay? Couple things. One, welcome back to all the students, all the students in both San Gabriel Unified School District and Garvey School District. They're all back at school in person, and so we're glad to have everybody back and interacting. Uh, our folks here in the police department have gone out to the schools and fulfilled their SRO, or school resource officer function, and we've met with students, teachers, and, and officials from the schools to make sure that we get a solid welcome back, and it's been a great experience. So again, welcome back and stay safe. Be sure in the schools you're following all the rules, all the rules of the school, the department health orders, etc. We're on the right track to taking care of some of these COVID problems and we want to continue in that direction. So kudos to all of you who are helping us get through it. Uh, other information is we want to make sure that you know since school is back in, in session, we're going to have some increased traffic. So be aware of that. Be aware of motorists, be aware of pedestrians, and let's make sure that we don't have any accidents. If everybody does their part, we can get through this whole evolution very, very safely and we appreciate that. Uh, upcoming in the fall, we've got several events that the city is putting on. Too many to mention, so I'll just guide you to the police department website where it'll give you a full itinerary of all the things that are going on. You can feel free to contact our Community Engagement Bureau and in specific, or specifically our School and Community Engagement Team, and you can get any information that you need. Additionally, you can call my office at any time, get through to me, and I'll help you with anything that, that you have questions on, and we can go from there. So, again, welcome to September. Feel free to call me if any questions come up as a result of this 411, and hopefully we'll be back in person here in October, but we will certainly let you know uh, before we make that decision. So be careful, make sure you're masking up. If you get an opportunity, please, we encourage you to get the vaccination, and let's keep our families and our friends safe. So we'll see you at the next 411 with the Chief. On my way out, let me put my mask back on and head on out. Thanks a lot. Hello, this is Greg DeVink, your friendly neighborhood public works director and city engineer for the city of San Gabriel. Uh, this is my update for the September edition of 411 with the Chief, and I'll be talking a little bit about what's going on in the world of public works with the city. Um, I'll start off with our largest current project that staff is working on, and that is um, we are trenching Las Tunas for about a mile and a half along the south side from the Alhambra city limits to one block shy of San Gabriel Boulevard. And we're doing that to put in a four inch plastic pipe with conduit sweeps to pull boxes out in the sidewalk. Um, it's a large project and for us it's gonna take many months to put it in with an average of about five, five to six staff on it each day with backhoes, dump trucks, augers, skid steers, um, the reason we're doing it is to have uh, a conduit in place for future fiber optic use for the city for sure to tie in our traffic signals um, for synchronization and sharing data with other uh, adjoin adjoining agencies. But also it could be used for telecom, for fiber connectivity to the home. Um, there's a a lot more potential to do it. And the reason we're pushing it right now and working on it pretty much every day is we are racing our next street resurfacing contract which does include Las Tunas. Um, that project should start the last week of September and continue through to approximately Thanksgiving which is late November. It is I think the largest street resurfacing project that the city's ever undertaken. It's about five and a half million dollars but more importantly it's um, planned to resurface uh, about ten and a half miles of the very worst streets in San Gabriel. Uh, it's no secret there's a lot of bad streets and it, to me it's been my impression that that's pretty much the number one public concern um, is get our streets in better condition. So this project uh, it will be an enormous change for the city. Uh, the streets are scattered about the city. Um, it's about, uh, well, other than Las Tunas, 
the rest are pretty much residential streets. Um, so that's very exciting. And what else do I have? Uh, because of that and tying up our staff, a lot of our staff, and we're not really a big public works agency, um, we are keeping up with our routine work of potholes, uh, sidewalk repairs, uh, signs, stripes, um, I took some notes, trash pickup, going around and getting bulky items that have been abandoned in the public right of way, but it is hurting our ability to keep up with uh, special requests where people maybe are requesting a new sidewalk be put in where uh, there isn't one. Um, so that a lot of that is being pushed off and delayed till paving of Las Tunas starts. That's kind of our cutoff day and that cr crew and all the equipment will be freed up to go back to pursuing um, special requests for residents and businesses. Uh, other things we're working on is the city did take position, possession of a new uh, Alltech boom truck and that is primarily used for tree trimming and so we got a new one the old one is pretty worn out and breaking routinely and hard to find parts um, kind of a funny thing happened was it's manufactured on the east coast and the manufacturer hires a driving company to bring it out to the west coast for us and uh, our best guess is the driver left the parking brake on so it arrived with no parking brake and oddly enough it doesn't have park in the transmission so you actually couldn't park the vehicle and not have it roll without putting chalk blocks in the wheels. Anyway, we got that repaired under warranty and they're using it now. Um, other projects we're working on, our facilities staff is deep into remodeling the main bathroom of the South Fire Station. Uh, it's been fully gutted and a new floor has been poured. There was a big sinkhole under the fire station bathroom and we've redone the plumbing and we are about to frame shower walls and start tiling. So um, they're tied up at the same time. The police department in their old facility has non-functioning HVAC equipment and that uh, obviously is a priority. Staff in there is, is uncomfortable. It's too hot in the building in, in the summer and eventually it'll be too cold in the winter. So we also have to deal with that and it is a large and expensive system that's in place now and needs a lot of uh, attention to get it working again. So we're working on that as well, but the same staff is also tied up in the uh, fire station bathroom. Um, one more big thing we're going for is uh, we have Measure W, which was a voter approved ballot initiative that collects money based on parcels, um, parcel tax and parcel size, and divvies up that money for stormwater quality and some of that money is managed by the regional entities and some of that money is given out to cities uh, based on population and San Gabriel's share um, was four hundred and forty two thousand dollars and we've programmed that in to use it for stormwater projects and maintenance issues all with the intention of eliminating pollutants from getting into the waters of America is I think what they refer to but separate from that the Entities that get about half of the money um, do issue and allocate larger funds for more regional projects, and we applied for one, and we were awarded um, enough money to go through a conceptual phase and to do an application for a larger project. Um, I'm actually doing a presentation to our local water board today, but essentially what we've done is we've finished the feasibility study and made the application deadline which was last month we're applying for just over four million dollars to do a project at Lugo Park where we will build a diversion structure in the um, flood channel that's just south of the park it'll divert water um, really when you look in the channel and see it running a little it kind of almost from the size of the channel seems like it's a trickle but in reality, when you look down there and you see maybe an inch, two inches of water flowing down, it actually is about a foot to a foot and a half, cubic foot and a half per minute, per second. Um, 
that equates to somewhere around um, more than a dozen swimming pools a day. It's actually a lot of water even though it doesn't look like it. Our intent is to take that water out, treat the um, pre-treat it with some, uh, just to get out the larger um, contamination and trash, but ultimately go into uh, a tank to build up some volume with pumps and pump it out into two different areas of the park. We already have uh, a, a constructed creek bed in the park as a, an earlier stormwater project. And so this project will flow water into that dry creek bed to make it more interesting. And, um, and we will also, on the other end of the park, create a bioswale, which is kind of a long, skinny, for lack of a better word, swampy environment. So it'll have um, vegetation more suitable to a, a damp environment. And both of these will create different types of habitats, more interesting park features. There will be a walking path along the side with educational signage and benches. There will be some new trees. Um, and really, the, the performance of this is to take water from the flood channel, which is high in, um, not high, but has contaminants and bacteria and stuff, and naturally degrade it through um, bioinfiltration and also percolate it into the ground where this water will actually go through, I don't even know, 100, 200 feet of soil down to our groundwater aquifers where by the time it gets through the soil, which is an excellent treatment material, um, it actually becomes potable water and we, you know, the, the region will pump out water from these aquifers for a lot of cities that actually utilize well water. So we take um, a resource that's um, a little bit contaminated and essentially disposed of and reclaim it, put it back into the ground and you know, LA residents will be somehow using it for drinking and irrigation and filling pools and everything we use potable water for. So that is uh, what I have for this update. and. Um, Again, uh, you can always go to the Public Works website, and um, we do have, you know, we're, we're updating it periodically, particularly our GIS map layer. There, there actually is uh, now a layer on there for the streets that are to be paved. And um, so if you want more information, our, our um, website is a good resource. And I look forward to talking to you again next month. Thank you very much. And I'm out by Mission, Mission Drive. And what we're doing here is pouring permeable concrete in a portion of the gutter where it doesn't drain properly. We get standing water. And so this is a permeable concrete. Let's see. It's a smaller aggregate than most concrete, and it has little to no sand content. So it has cement and stone, and it does bond together and cure into a hard concrete. It's not as strong as normal concrete, but it's pretty constrained by the asphalt and the curve, and it should be fine. And what it does is it allows water to drain through what was previously an impermeable surface. So it doesn't drain super fast when it's saturated, but puddles will not stay for a long time. That's the right time. So right here. You see any low spots? Oh no, right? Uh, that is. So this trench is actually just about a one to two feet deep. Kenny, when he's done right here, mm -hmm. oh, guide him around through this side, right? Okay. And uh, filled with lined with filter fabric, and then covered or filled with some rock, large rock, and we cover that with filter fabric. And it's again another permeable material. And then we pour this permeable concrete over it. Durable wearing surface as it is out on the street, subject to traffic. So, 
separate from this, start here. We also cast in a large rectangular cast iron drain that goes under this sidewalk. So we took out the sidewalk, put in the drain, and put it back. And it goes all the way over to McGrordy here. And we will be filling this in next. So under this filter fabric is about a foot of crushed rock all wrapped with filter fabric to keep dirt out of the rock. But that creates a, a larger drainage surface area. And so this area um, in the city, it's a short street next to City Hall, which is right over there. And City Hall is getting a new door installed today because the old one is uh, very heavily used and completely falling apart. Um, but this area of McGroarty used to be well, floods during rainstorms quite deep. The water would actually reach the top of the curb, so the ponding of the water out here after a rainstorm was uh, about seven inches deep. So this drain should alleviate the bulk of that ponding. And then what is left behind will leach into the ground through this little permeable gutter area that we're going to cast. And I am out at Allen May in Las Tunis, where staff has been concentrating last month, the month before that, probably the next two months, on getting a fiber optic conduit in the ground. So we have a lot of our equipment out here, a whole bunch of staff, and we're putting in a four inch conduit. That's primer going on the joint. The purple is primer and then the gray is blue. We'll push the pieces together. We're going all the way, starting from the Alhambra city limits. And we're going to go all the way to San Gabriel Boulevard, which is about a mile and a half. And we've been doing about 120 feet a day. Uh, we're not going that deep, just about a foot and a half, between a foot and a half and two feet. But you can see that the street section asphalt is really thick here. It's over a foot about 14 16 inches thick and what we plan to do is get uh, four inch conduit in the ground with pull boxes at all the corners so we'll be sweeping under the curb and gutter which adds more time and inside this four inch conduit when we're all done we'll pull four one inch inner duct conduits and that'll essentially give us four one inch conduits for data use all along Las Tunas. We're trying uh, pretty hard to race a street paving contract, which we've already awarded, and they're gonna be starting late September, um, and starting at the south end of the city, then doing the north end of the city, then doing Las Tunas last, just to buy us as much time as we can get. Uh, these same guys also have to go out crack seal these longitudinal cracks on Las Tunas. Um, we don't want those showing up through the street. So we're going to get the conduit in the ground. In about a month we're going to rent a crack seal trailer and we will fill the potholes, crack seal the joints, uh, hopefully in time for the paving contractor. Another thing I want to show is um, we've already saw cut the whole length of the street. But we also have this uh, ditching attachment onto our skid steer, and it angles down and it chews up the dirt pretty quickly. Um, there are other conduits we're crossing constantly in utilities. In some places, we're over another utility, so we're not going that deep. We don't want to break anything else and that is the update for now